the young Spencer's theory of progress, evolution, emphasized that the change from traditional to modern society was an advance. It unleashed human potential, it unleashed human happiness, it unleashed human individuality. And for the first time in history, everybody, not just a few elites, but everybody had the ability to become self-defined, self-managed, self-directed. Well, Spencer's writings became famous, and in part because they were picked up by industrial leaders. Andrew Carnegie, the American who became fantastically wealthy when he sold out his ownership of steel companies in 1901, brought Herbert Spencer to America in the 1890s. Carnegie boasted that Spencer had given him his life philosophy. All is well since all grows better is his life philosophy. And when Spencer came to America, uh, Carnegie made certain that he came to Carnegie's hometown of Pittsburgh to visit the Carnegie steel, steel mills and to see what the most industrially advanced uh, city in America looked like. Upon arrival, Spencer viewed Pittsburgh and said six months residence here would justify suicide. Spencer aged and became increasingly disillusioned by the actual direction of capitalist modernity. As corporate power grew and fewer individuals were free to pursue their own self-chosen paths, Spencer wrote powerful, even frightening essays predicting a return to enslaved human conditions, possibly worse than any in history. As modern society divided into wealthy elites and impoverished masses, he wrote of a recrudescence of culture, became cruder, and a coming slavery of humanity. In his very late years, uh, he died in 1903, but in his late years, he was looking forward to the turning of the military machinery of the industrial powers on each other. This machinery had been developed to basically conquer and annihilate traditional peoples. Spencer recognized that virtually all traditional peoples had now been fully colonized and that the machinery that was being accumulated for destruction was going to be turned on other modern societies. What went wrong with modernity? This is the question that weighed upon Spencer and that still motivates sociologists like me to work long hours in archives and offices. Clearly, modernity unleashes some attractive, unprecedented possibilities for human happiness. It increases human comfort, pleasure, meaningful action. Modernity generates these positive things, huge surpluses capable of eliminating human scarcity, benefiting all humans with goods or with radically reduced need to work. It greatly increases the freedom of individual movement, the tolerance of diverse belief and protection of privacy, though less so in the US than perhaps in some other modern societies. It is stimulating and creates opportunities for self-chosen growth and self-managed development so that one can choose how they wish to grow in power and effectiveness during their lifetime. Those are the sunny sides of modernity. But the tragic element remains. Spencer's later years brought him into contact with dark evidence that contradicted his bright and sunny theory. It is to Spencer's credit that he scientifically opened his eyes to the evidence and changed his mind. Spencer's last writings force us to ask questions that we continue to um, uh, re-ask and investigate even today. Why are so many of the planet desperately poor? Is the wealth of the property-owning elites on this planet and even the wealth of average citizens in wealthy countries like the United States linked to the poverty of workers elsewhere? Is the barbaric, unsophisticated culture of the masses linked to their continuing poverty and their inability to raise out of a kind of enslaved condition? Has corporate capitalism created powerful bureaucracies that rule subjects in a military-like fashion? And if so, what can we do about it? And then finally, why do those with the ability to take advantage of their freedoms so rarely do so? Why do people who have been blessed with much use their power and position to increase their advantage? The more specific idea of evolution now reached is a change from an indefinite and coherent homogeneity to a definite, coherent heterogeneity. Hero worship is strongest where there is least regard for human freedom. In science, 
the important thing is to modify and change one's ideas as science advances. Life is a continuous adjustment of internal relations to external relations. Marriage is a ceremony in which rings are put on the finger of the lady and through the nose of the gentleman. No one can be perfectly free till all are free. No one can be perfectly moral till all are moral. Our lives are universally shortened by our ignorance. Society exists for the benefit of its members, not the members for the benefit of society. The ultimate result of shielding men from the effects of folly is to fill the world with fools.